Potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide are all white powders in the solid phase. And if we put some of that in our test tube, we can add some water to it. Now you see, at the moment, what you see there is some solid ionic crystal. And that consists of positive and negative ions rigidly packed in a crystal lattice. But now when we add a bit of water, we can make a solution. And when we do so, then that white powder dissolves. You might need to shake it up a bit just to aid dissolving. But you see that then you can no longer see um, where the white particles are because what happened is that the water has dismantled the crystal lattice and made a solution and in so doing it has separated the positive potassium ions from the negative chloride ions and so made them free to move around. Halides are ions of group 7, ions of halogens. For example, chloride, bromide and iodide are halides. Silver halides are insoluble, and so the presence of a halide can be shown up by adding silver ions, and if an insoluble product is formed, that shows up the fact that a halide was present. So here we have some silver nitrate, which consists of silver ions and nitrate ions, and we're going to introduce a bit of silver nitrate into each of these test tubes. Now we know that these test tubes do contain halides. The first one contains a chloride, potassium chloride, which consists of potassium ions, K plus ions, and Cl minus chloride ions, dissociated from one another with water surrounding each of the ions, all of the ions. And then the middle test tube has bromide ions and the third one, iodide ions. And we're going to make that visible by adding silver ions to show up the fact that those halides are there. So we add a bit of silver nitrate to the first one, and notice that as soon as we do so, we get a white precipitate, and that is silver chloride. Silver chloride cannot dissolve, and so that's why it comes out of solution and it um, is visible there as a white precipitate. We add some silver nitrate to the bromide, and we notice that it turns a bit of a darker color than in the case of the, the chloride. We call it cream colored, and that cream color is silver bromide. And now we add some silver nitrate to the iodide solution. And the color turns even darker, yellowish, and that yellow color is silver iodide. So this is a test for each of these halides. Had we not known what the substances were inside these test tubes at the start, we would have reasoned like this. We add some silver nitrate to the first one, it forms a white colored precipitate, it must be silver chloride. Ah, that tells us a chloride was present at the start. We add some silver nitrate to the middle one, we see a cream colored solution from that, we deduce there had been a bromide there. And when we add the silver nitrate to the last solution, we see it turns yellow. From that we deduce that yellow silver iodide formed, so there must have been an iodide present there.